Hello and thank you for watching another one of my Matchbox makeovers. Today I'm going to be doing over the Matchbox number 42, the Studebaker Lark Wagoneer. So here it is on the carousel. Now this little baby has been played with quite a bit. Looks like it's been in somebody's sand pit for a number of years. A lot of paint loss, scratches all over it, filthy dirty on the inside and uh, a little bit of work here for me to get this looking new again. The front grille is uh, pitted and so is the bumper bar so I should be sanding that down. The windscreen looks absolutely putrid so I'm hoping that will come up good. Now this vehicle has got an unusual feature it's this uh, sliding roof section. It should slide forwards and backwards quite freely but this one's a little bit sticky probably got a bit of grit or a bit of distortion in the frame maybe it doesn't want to come all the way back so I shall be trying to fix that up also first thing as usual drill out these rivets and then thread the post to accept the screw when I put it back together What I'm doing is trying just to remove the head of the rivet and not actually destroy the shaft itself. When I'm happy I just prise the base off with a flat bladed screwdriver like so. This is the base, as you can see it's absolutely covered in crud. Now to remove the seats, look at those. Jeez, imagine if that was a real car, you wouldn't want to get in it would you? And here at the back I've just noticed that the tow hook is broken so I'll have to glue that back together. Now I'm going to take the windscreen out. Let's have a look at this. Hopefully it's just fall out. There we go. Oh, and here's the uh, sliding roof section. Next I'm going to drill into these rivet posts with a small drill to make a hole that I can put a screw thread in. I've put some white tape around this drill bit as a guide to stop me drilling too deep. The screw I'm using is 2mm in diameter, therefore I'm using a 1.5mm drill to drill the hole. This is a tool used to cut internal threads. It's called a tap. When using it, it's a good idea to lubricate the tip with a small drop of oil. Keeping the tap vertical, you screw it into the hole forwards and backwards a little bit at a time until an internal thread is cut to the correct depth. Now I'm doing a test fit of my selected screw. What I'm aiming for is for the underside of the head of the screw to sit flush with the base of the vehicle when it's been reassembled. In some instances, if the screw is too long, they may need to be shortened using a bench grinder or a file. This is a shot of what the screws look like in position. I'm now going to clean the other parts using hot soapy water and a toothbrush. It never ceases to amaze me how clean these parts come when given a bit of TLC.
the transparency will need to be polished after I've cleaned it to try and get some of the scuffs and marks out of it. Whilst wearing rubber gloves I'm now going to use paint stripper to remove the paint from the vehicle. I apply the paint stripper just using a normal paintbrush and then after it's reacted with the paint I remove it with a toothbrush in another bowl of water. On some models this roof section was painted and on others it was polished metal. I've decided that my model will have a polished metal roof. I try to remove as much of the original paint as possible. Here I'm using a small scalpel or modelling knife to pick away at any bits of paint that I've missed. Oops, I've dropped the knife. Oh. Once again I stuffed up. I didn't drill too deep this time but I went too deep with the tap. I hope that this is the last time that I have to fix a hole I've made in a model. Here's a look at some scuff marks on the roof. I'm going to fix these with some modelling putty. A quick sand with some wet and dry paper and she's good to go. I looked at some pictures online and this part should not be here. So I removed it with a small hobby file. This is my first attempt at polishing the roof section using some steel wool. After that I used some buffing compound and a polishing pad on my Dremel. I tried my best to get a mirror-like finish. I was trying to mimic polished stainless steel. I went back to basics and ended up using wet and dry emery paper to try and get some of the scuffs out of the panel. I then re-polished it using polishing compound and the Dremel and this is as good as it got. I then gave it a quick coat of spray varnish. Here I'm giving a very light spray of undercoat to the body in preparation for final painting. The undercoat shows up all the fine details of the model and also some of the imperfections. Here you can see the fuel filler cap which is less than one millimeter in diameter and some rough edges around the windows that will need filing down. Now to concentrate on the base. As you can see I've done half of it already for comparison. Now I'm going to do the second half. First up I'm going to clean up that front bumper bar using my fine file. Now I'm removing some rough edges from the side of the base. Next I'm going to use a soft bristled metal brush to burnish the base. And now I move on to the headlights and front grille. I'm now changing the head from a wire brush to a softer sponge to try and polish up this metal base. I'm using some aluminium polish paste that I had in the cupboard at home. I'm going to see if it works. I'm applying it with a paintbrush and then giving it a buff up with the sponge wheel. Let's see if it works. For that final finish I'm using a thinner metal polish that I also found under the sink at home. Considering it had 50 years of oxidisation on it, 
it doesn't look that bad. Next, it's a quick fix of the plastic toe hitch. That took me three attempts to say that. I'm going to use super glue and baking powder and sand it down with a file. You won't even know it was ever broken. There you go, as good as new. Now it's time to try and colour match the paint. I'm using Tamiya paints blue and green. When I first got the model, I obtained some Dulux colour chart cards and through family discussion, we decided that the colour of the model was one of these three shades of blue. Probably the middle one or the upper one. They are only one shade apart so it was difficult to decide amongst ourselves as to which one to choose. Eventually I had a colour that I was happy with. So now it was time to start spray painting. For the first time I am using my new surgical forceps to hold my model whilst I paint it. This was recommended by some of my subscribers and I must say it's a damn good idea. Wish I'd thought of it first. For the information of those that are interested, I dilute my Tamiya paints with about 20% of thinners these days to help it run easily through the spray gun. To mix the matching paint, I use the following paint codes. White X2, Sky Blue X14 and Light Green X15 Tamiya paints. Because of the large windows and the open roof area, I'm taking extra care to paint the inside of this model as well as the outside. Here's a shot of the model drying inside my spray booth. When I have to colour match paint, I always keep the excess just in case I scratch the model whilst I'm reassembling it. That way I have the exact colour paint to touch it up. Here, finally, are all the parts ready for reassembly. First up, I place the sliding roof panel into the body, shiny side up. Next, the polished transparency, followed by the interior. Please be patient, I will get there in the end. And finally the base, which is secured with two screws. I have colour matched the screws to match the body, so they closely resemble the original rivets. For adding the final detail, I'm using some paint from a chrome paint pen and a very fine brush to paint some details such as door handles and bonnet badges. Let's have a quick recap and see what this model looked like before I started. This model was definitely in need of a restoration. And this is what it looks like now. Here for your pleasure are some high definition photographs of the finished model.
I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video as much as I have enjoyed making it. Oh, what? How the f***ing hell did that happen?